I don't have a lot of progress to show you because I've spent most of my time failing, but I finally came up with a scheme that I like and I'm moving forward with it. Here's the latest in the strengthening of the hull. It's braced everywhere with some extra triangles to spread out the load. This will be where the bed is, and I don't see why I can't use the wood that makes up the floor of the bed as an extra structure, sort of like a bulkhead, for the boat. And then here's some more strengthening on the sides of the boat. Here I haven't focused a whole lot on adding strength right now because it's going to be a full bulkhead. I don't want to cut off the light to the rest of the boat yet. It's been really warm lately, up to 60 during the day. So I've been able to get some painting done. And while I wait for that paint to dry enough to walk on it, I'll be working on the dinghy. Scratches and cracks everywhere. Might be hard to see on the video, so I'm just pointing to everything with my fingers. It's everywhere. So I'm hoping to put another layer of fiberglass over that and then paint on top. So the surfboard's coming along nicely, and I like the way the paint turned out. Looks a lot like wood, so I'm thinking about doing the same thing with the dinghy. Here's how the top of the surfboard turned out. Those are rubber bits in black there. Here's the bottom of the dinghy, the sabo, with the fiberglass on it. Lots of little bubbles to get out. Uh, and I triple layered this part, which also gave me a lot of bubbles, but I'll fix those. And then here's the other side. I'll just trim this off with the cutting wheel on the grinder. I bought 100 pieces of Douglas fir. They're one and a half by three and a half by eight feet long. I cut them right now into five <coughs> foot length. All I'm using right now is a chop saw and a table saw. A band saw would be preferable, but I don't have one and a good one costs at least 400 bucks. In order to cut the wood to fit the curve, I simply find the point at which the wood is the greatest distance from the wall, from the hull. In this case, it's here at 91 millimeters. And so then I go to each rib and measure 91 millimeters, make a mark, and then I cut along those marks to make the wooden frames fit. And here's an example. So it's a little bit blocky because I'm using the table saw, but it still works. I thought of a better idea, at least in my mind, than using this piece on the bottom through those notches. I'm going to wrap all of the wooden frames in aluminum channel. So it'll be about an inch and a half in, and I'll weld on tabs to the ribs and bolt it on. And that'll strengthen the hull while at the same time giving me some wood to attach all of the floors and walls to. This feels great. Now that I've decided on a path to take, a method of construction, I can start mass producing everything. <clears throat> These are all five foot lengths. There's no point in trying to make them longer because the curve is going to cut them completely anyways. I'll need to build on top of them to complete the curve. There have been a lot of questions about what engine I'm going to use. I'll probably end up using two 9.9 .9 horsepower Honda outboards, but there are some other options on my list. Here's one of them. I've got this VW Type 4 motor sitting in the shed. I don't know if it runs, but I would absolutely love to find out. It'd be so fun to make it run. I might use that. I don't know why people don't use air-cooled engines. It seems to make sense to me. Keep all that salt water out of the engine. 
So that's an option. These things are torque monsters. So they'll make their full power almost at about 2,200 RPM. And they make over 50 horsepower. You can build them up to 150 if you want, sometimes 200 horsepower. Very robust engines, so I'm considering using it.